Hi everyone, and welcome to another restoration at Mr. Carlson's lab. Let's get started. Welcome to the Grand Radio Receiver Restoration Series at Mr. Carlson's lab. In the previous video, I asked out of a lineup of radios, basically out of three in that lineup, which radio receiver that you would like to see done first. And the GE is the one, or I should say the popular pick, so it gets the bench time first. Now, each one of these receivers will be a multiple part series. If I was to try and fit this entire restoration into one video and convey all the information that I want to share with you, chances are this video is going to be two hours long. So what I'm not going to do is try and cram it all into one video and I'm going to spread it out over multiple parts. I'm hoping to get this in at around four to five parts, this particular radio receiver here. So if you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe and hit the bell so you get the notifications because the videos after this are gonna come in rather quickly. So basically when this video is done, when you're actually watching this video, I'll be working on part number two already. And that one will be up very shortly and so on and so on. Reason being is because we have a whole line of receivers to go through. So in the previous video, this is the lineup of receivers we're going to go through. And you will see this particular receiver on top of all the rest of them. You can see how big this receiver is. So all the receivers that you see are going to get restored basically from the easiest to the hardest. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the easier receivers like this one right here. And we're going to work our way up through the more complex receivers right to the most complex receiver. And that will help you understand as we move through this restoration, you'll start to get a better idea of how the simpler receivers work. And then as we go to the next one, you'll be like, oh, I see how that fits in. And then when we go to the more complex one, you'll be like, oh, I see how they've done that. And basically what it is, is to give you a whole bunch of those uh, light bulb moments. You know, when you see the little light bulb appear above your head, it's to give you a whole bunch of those moments so that you can follow along and feel comfortable in this series. Now, the idea of this series is to convey as much information as I can to you. So this isn't going to be one of those where I, uh, you know, a restoration where I don't talk and everything's sped up. The idea is to share information. So you're going to hear me talking and explaining everything in detail. Now you can use this knowledge for other things like audio amplifiers and televisions and all sorts of other things as well. So there'll be a lot of knowledge conveyed in this series. And I invite you to take a pen and paper if you want to jot down some notes and take some notes as we're going along because you can use these in the future to help you with your future restorations. Even if it's not a radio and it's some other older electronic device, a lot of the information in this series will be very, very beneficial to you. So the story on this receiver is this was found in a barn and it's that famous radio barn that I visited before. This was kept very nicely. I've already put some polish on top of the cabinet just to see if I can get rid of some of the scratches and it just makes them disappear. I'm going to share that special polish with you. It works fantastic. I've left scratches all over the case so I can show you how well that stuff works. This radio receiver is so big. I'm sitting five feet back from this thing. Okay. I'm five feet back. I'm in behind a camera, in behind a tripod. And if I put my arms ahead, this is as far as they go. All right. You can't even see them. I have to, my head is basically bumping the camera right now. And I'm still about a good, oh, I'd say uh, half a foot away from the face here. All right. I'm not even touching it. I can't even touch it. The radio receiver is so big, it takes up my entire work area. This is the largest tabletop radio receiver I have worked on to date. So it's going to be nice to actually get this thing out of the case and maybe knock the size down so I can and fit everything onto here. The dial on this thing is just huge and it is one of the most beautiful dials I have seen aside from the DeForest Crosley radio restoration that I did, oh, quite a, you know, I think it would be a year and a half ago something like that long time ago this right here is an eye tube so it has a tuning eye on the top so it has that bonus as well this radio receiver has been subject to an area that has been rather smoky how do i know this well when i was polishing this up i thought hey you know i'm going to try and just clean up one of the tuning knobs here just a little bit now you'll notice the difference here well you notice it has a gold looking grill cloth down here and here and this is kind of gold well, I believe this is actually gold, and I thought that the knobs were supposed to match that, but that's actually what the knob looks like. It's silver. So that is tar, whatever, from, I guess, just years of being subject to smoke. 
When I wipe this down with Windex, which I haven't even really spent a lot of time cleaning, that's just a few wipes with Windex, it turned silver and I'm like, no way. So I thought that this was the same color. It really does match. So uh, I don't know whether somebody had a lot of fun with this trying to make the knobs match the grill cloth and I don't know, maybe blew smoke at it for a whole long time. But um, that is just, that's a glaze on top of there and it all needs to come off. So I'm hoping that the chassis inside this radio receiver doesn't have that glaze on it. We'll see when we get to it. So all I've done is I've briefly looked through the little holes in the back panel and that's it. So we're going to discover all of that together. Now, as mentioned before, this is going to be a multi-part series. And again, I'll try and get this thing in under five. So in this one, we're going to take a look at the case. We're going to take a look inside, see what we're up against, talk a little bit about the design. And in the next video, we'll pull everything out and we'll get right into the restoration. So we're just going to familiarize ourselves with what we have ahead of us here. And uh, there is enough to look at here in order to, uh, to give us a very, very good start. So this is the front of the radio. You can see this is the band switch right here. I'm going to have to kind of bend under the camera here and turn this. So it has a, sounds like a, a turret tuner, like a television inside. And uh, this is the tuning control. Look at that. Right around here, it's like, feels like glass. I'm sure that could even be fixed up. That's as smooth as glass. Uh, there's a tone control there, a volume control, and then it says on, uh, or sorry, off, radio, and phono. So it has an input for an amplifier, obviously, on the back. So uh, it would be kind of nice around Christmas time. You could uh, put Christmas music through this or whatever you want to listen to it. You know, some external music source that's already uh, pretty much done for you at this point. So a lot of uh, a lot of neat features for a radio receiver. I can kind of tell in 1957, that's the, the year of this radio receiver, I can kind of tell that they really wanted to make this tabletop stand out and uh, give it a lot of very neat features. And uh, they really did a nice job. I'm hoping, okay, I don't know, but I'm hoping that they light all of these little segments up separately when you rotate this. That would just be incredible. They have the little, you know, it could even be modified a little bit. Uh, can you imagine how nice that would look if you had some really bright LEDs that shone in each one of these? It would probably just jump right out of there. So if you, uh, you know, wanted to do a mod or something like that, I'm sure that could very easily be done in a case like this. But we'll see how the, uh, the factory lighting system works inside this thing. And um, if it looks, you know, if it looks very well, we'll just leave the thing alone. And... Um, Maybe I'll just do a little bit of experimentation and just light some sections up with an LED and uh, and see how how it would actually change it, what it would look like over the factory uh, over the factory bulb. So that's the base of it, and the thing is just monstrous. Again, I can't really convey uh, how big the thing is. I'd have to put a, a ruler across. You can see it takes up my entire work mat. And uh, that's from side to side. Again, I'm sitting way, way, way back from this thing. So when I get the, to the back side of this, which we're going to take a look at now, I'll turn this around. Let's remove the back and let's take a look inside this thing and see how they've put this thing together. And uh, that'll probably uh, give you a better size reference to how just gigantic this tabletop radio receiver is. You need a special table just for this thing. It's so big. All right, so this is the back side of the radio receiver, and I managed to get just a little bit closer because the camera's off to the side now, so you can tell by the size of my hand how big this thing is. It's the size of a small television, really. It is, or maybe even a larger television. The thing is just monstrous. So it has a whole bunch of uh, slot-headed screws in the case here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all these screws, and I'll be right back. All right, I have all the screws removed, aside from this one screw right here. And before I remove that, we should actually take a look at what's on the back side of the radio receiver, right? So we have an external antenna connection, which will be attached to the 369 antenna for testing this radio receiver. There's a local and distance switch on the back. So basically you're just setting up the gain of the front end of this thing here. So if you have very strong signals, you'd have it on local. And if you wanted to receive, uh, you know, distant stations, you'd put it on distance. We have a connection for an external loudspeaker, which is kind of interesting for a receiver like this. A phono input, and of course we have the power here. And we can see the tag here, model CX371. Okay, so let's take a look at what's inside this thing. This is exciting. So this is my favorite part. I always love discovering how they've put these things together. 
and we're gonna do that together here. So let's find out what they've done. Hold on here, get rid of that screw so this doesn't fall. Wow, look at that. So these come off, they do. Get that out of the way, you just get the back side of the radio receiver out of the way. Well, what do I see? I see a separate amplifier and power supply chassis. They actually went through the trouble to separate the power supply from the actual radio. It has push-pull output. It has two 6v6s. You can see 6v6 right here. Driving an audio output transformer. There is a uh, tube in the back there. Probably a 12AX7 or something like that. Maybe a 12AU7. I don't know. We'll have to take a closer look at that. And what looks to be a rectifier tube back there. Oh, there is a uh, legend right here. We'll take a closer look at that. I'm too far back from the radio receiver to really without getting my head inside the shot here, right? Because again, this thing is just massive. Yeah, look at the size of my hand. This thing is the size of a small television, right? Just crazy. So, I don't know what this is, this mounting system. It almost looks like it is mounted on some very, I don't know, kind of an interesting mounting system here. It's got some rubber bushings here and they're soft still. So we'll have to take a look at that. The amplifier is just hard mounted into the case. So, Look at the size of the speaker in this thing. General Electric, made in Canada. Everything inside this thing is just in great condition. Looks like it has a three, uh, you know, well, there's three capacitors, a three gang tuner inside of it. So most likely an antenna tuning stage, an RF stage, and the oscillator stage in the front end. Looks like it's using a 6AL5. And all sorts of interesting things, wow. Very nicely put together. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll get the camera and get it a little bit closer into this so that we can take a more detailed view. I have to move things around here again because this is just so big. I didn't realize I was actually videoing this in 4K. So I noticed the, the file size was absolutely huge when I when I downloaded the last file size. So uh, if you have the 4K, uh, if you have a 4K monitor, or if you'd like to click the gear icon uh, right below the video, you'll see a little gear. If you click that, you'll see a resolution pop up. If you click 4K, it should really make this crystal clear for you if, um, if you are just watching this in standard 1080. Okay, I'll move the camera and we'll take a closer look. Here's the tube complement, according to the chart on the side here. So there's a 6BC5. I imagine that's probably the front end, so basically which is closest to the antenna. And we have a 6AL5, which is a double diode, usually used for detection, possibly AVC. Uh, 6BA6 and 6BA6 would most likely be the IF amplifier. 6B6 is going to be a mixer. And a lot of the times this can do the oscillation in, in itself as well, but since this goes to higher frequencies, I imagine maybe they're using a 6C4 as a possible separate oscillator. We'll have to take a look at the schematic and see what they're doing here with that tube. A 6U5 will be the tuning indicator. And over on the other side, we have the two 6V6s, which are the outputs that drive the transformer. And we have a 12AX7, which would be a phase inverter and probably audio amplifier. And a 5Y3 over here, which would be the rectifier tube on top of this really large transformer that's down here. So I'll just move the camera down a bit. The size of that power transformer. I think they probably have a voltage selector tap under here or something like that. So uh, it looks like it could be, you know, 25 cycles. It's, you know, the core size is, you know, pretty big. So I don't know, maybe it's uh, 60 cycles. It's just a really large transformer. We'll have to find out. So you can see here, pardon the jitter when I uh, move the camera here. So these are the output tubes and uh, transform. We have a four and eight ohm tap with a common. It looks like they are socketed so you can remove all these chassis. They really didn't you know, spare any money with this thing, did they? You know, everything is just, you know, so easily to easy to disassemble here. Put that back in. It even looks like the speaker you can unplug. Look at that, you can. You can even unplug the speaker. So they really thought of everything when they put this thing together. So it should be relatively easy to remove the chassis. So we'll just uh, move this over here a little more again. And uh, we'll take a look at this. So you can see the three gang capacitor over here. Get the light on that so you can actually see that. Is it showing up? There it is, so the three gang capacitor there. This would most likely be that RF front end, little 6AL5 tube over here. I try to slide this receiver to move things over the other way, but uh, this is just too big. I can't do that. 
Give me a moment, I'll move the camera and I'll take a look at this angle. I think I see the magic with the dial lights here. Okay, so if we take a look down here, you see all these little areas right here? I guess when you turn that turret style tuner, it aligns a light up with each one of these little bands. So that's the little pieces of plastic sticking out of uh, each one of those little bands that you see on the dial. You can see that any better. We can adjust a light onto that to see if that comes in any better. Let's see here. That's about as close as it's going to get here. So this gear, obviously there's a lamp attached in here and it just moves across from each one and basically shines a light in each one of the uh, bands. So that looks pretty neat. I'm looking forward to seeing how that would work. A nice bright bulb in there would probably make this just work absolutely fantastic. So we have the three transformers here. So this would be the, uh, the mixer. So this would be the coupling transformer for that to this tube and then the coupling transformer to this IF tube and the coupling transformer to the detector. And uh, our amp over here. So uh, another dial light over here. So I don't know what they're lighting up with this. I guess we'll end up finding out what they're doing with that. So it looks like this thing is going to come apart relatively easy. So in the next video, we'll take this out. We'll take everything out of the case and we'll start working on this piece by piece and make this receiver perform the way it did when it rolled off the factory line. Now, here's the thing. This receiver is built so incredibly well, I'm pretty sure that this is going to stand up pretty close to some of those communications receivers. This thing is, uh, just from looking at the top side of the chassis, I can already tell that this thing is uh, probably going to receive like crazy. So part two is going to be up very, very shortly, so don't forget to hit the notification bell. Again, as you're watching this, I'm making part two, so it'll be up very, very soon. If you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. If you'd like to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap that bell symbol. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the Show More tab, and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comments section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.